Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS3B. It's on natural hazards. A natural hazard is an earth process that can eventually affect humans in a negative way. And sometimes we confuse the term natural hazard which, with the term natural disaster. And so the one thing you should remember is that a natural hazard may eventually lead to a natural disaster. So let me teach you what that means using an example. In 1906, there was the Great San Francisco Fire. It was a fire that killed thousands of people. It burned 80% of the city of San Francisco, and so that's clearly a natural disaster. But what led to this fire? That was a earthquake. So there was a massive earthquake. Uh, we think it was around a 7.8 on the Richter scale, and that eventually caused the fires, which led to the natural disaster. But earthquakes have been occurring in the San Francisco area for probably millions of years and will continue for millions of years into the future. And we could have predicted that. If you look right here where San Francisco is, it's right next to the San Andreas Fault. And so these two plates are sliding past one another. And so an earthquake is an example of a natural hazard. Another natural hazard that's also caused by an earthquake is a tsunami, which is a massive wave that's created in the ocean. Volcanoes are examples of natural hazards, and so is flooding. And so natural hazards are going to occur naturally on our planet over and over and over again. And we can't stop them from occurring, so you cannot remove a natural hazard. There was another uh, earthquake in San Francisco. This was in 1989. It's sometimes referred to as the World Series earthquake because it interrupted Game 1 of the World Series. And it caused damage like this. And you can see it was centered a little bit farther south, but it was another massive earthquake. And so since we can't remove the natural hazard, what we try to do is to reduce the amount of damage that's caused by these natural hazards. And so you can see here that in, in that 1989 earthquake, the, some of the buildings were damaged, and those were ones that generally had garages on the bottom, so they didn't have enough support. And so we can retrofit buildings in areas that are prone to earthquakes, and we can make them safer. I happen to live in an area right next to Yellowstone Park where we have a lot of earthquake activity and so the high school I teach in is retrofitted with these giant beams and it's going to keep us safer if and when we have an earthquake. And so another thing that is important is that we try to predict these natural hazards. So one that I can remember was the eruption of Mount St. Helens. And so Mount St. Helens used to look like this, and then a few days later it looked like that. So there was a massive eruption that blew the top off of that mountain. But the scientists were able to predict that. There was a massive bulge that was starting to form on the side of it, and it had literally moved up 50 feet. So they knew that something was going to occur, and the people who died were people who didn't heed their warnings. And so we can predict a lot of things like volcanoes. We can make predictions about hurricanes now. They don't just arrive. We can track them using satellite imagery and radar, and we can figure out where they are and where they're moving and who's in, in the path of that hurricane. Sometimes, in the case of earthquakes, we can't predict when those natural hazards are going to occur. We don't know when the earth is going to slip, but what we can do is we can gather data of, of when the earthquakes are occurring, where they're occurring, so we can predict these maps and figure out where are danger zones for earthquakes. And so along the coast of, of the, the west coast, we're obviously going to have lots of earthquake activity. We'll get some right here in the middle as the, as the plate is buckling. And then in areas where we have hot zones, like here in Yellowstone Park, we're going to have high earthquake activity. So it's an area where we should get ready because earthquakes eventually are going to occur. And as the population on our planet increases, we're going to see more natural disasters as a result of these hazards. We're going to see increase in, in, in damage due to flooding, wildfires, hurricanes. Some of these may be increasing. As we're seeing increases in the global temperature, we're going to see increase in severe storms. And as we increase our population, it's going to increase that, that damage double fold. And so how do we teach this in school? Well, uh, first of all, you should talk about severe weather. And so in the lower elementary grades, you want to explain to your students that severe weather doesn't just occur randomly. It occurs in specific times and in specific places. And so in the southeast, we're going to see hurricanes. And that's generally at the end of summer and into fall. We're going to see tornadoes in the Midwest. We're going to see fire, wildfires out west. We're going to see heat waves in the southwest. And we're going to see heavy snowfall in the northeast and that's caused by lake effect and so what we find is that meteorologists can help us predict this severe weather and help us plan for it 
As you move into the upper elementary grades, you want to start talking about natural hazards, listing them, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes, and make sure the students know that they're not going to go anywhere, that we cannot remove the natural hazard, but what we can do is we can prepare for it and we can reduce damage caused by it. As you move into middle school, you want to start talking about natural hazards and how they can be predicted. So we can make direct predictions by either watching the earth, in the case of a volcano, or watching the storm, in the case of a hurricane. And then we can do indirect prediction. We can find areas where we're more likely to have earthquakes and we can use those to prepare. As they move into high school, you want to un them to understand that natural hazards are just a part of human history that they've occurred through time. So this is the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which, co which covered all of the city of Pompeii. Um, in 1906, we had the San Francisco earthquake. We had Hurricane Katrina in 2005. And we'll continue to have natural disaster disasters that are caused by natural hazard into the future. We just have to prepare for them and be able to predict them. And so natural hazards can occur at a local area, regionally, or can occur globally. They're not going anywhere. And they're going to increase as populations increase, and some of those are going to increase as we make changes to the global temperature. Um, but as long as you know where they are, where they might occur, we can pre prepare for them, we can limit damage, and I hope that was helpful.